one of the questions we can try to answer with the idea of variability is the performance of let's say one class compared to another on maybe a test so on average now that we're dealing with population values here so our population mean for the entire class um, that is the population is 85 with a standard deviation of 20 and class 2 has a uh, mean of 75 with a standard deviation of 5 so which which class is better well class 1 technically has a higher average and the flaw of averages would tell us that class 1 performed better but now that we're we know about variability we're going to take variability into account in order to uh, make sure that we're being as accurate as possible or that we're taking all things into consideration so uh, what can we say well since we describe uh, standard deviation as the roughly average spread or average uh, spread of the data then we could say that on average that a person should have uh, should be within uh, an average measure of of the mean so on average I would probably expect it for somebody to be within mu plus or minus one standard deviation okay so what would that mean well for class one that would mean that I would expect pretty much a, a lot of people to fall between plus or minus uh, 20 right so that's that's on average how much I vary my deviations are from the mean so that means that I would expect an interval of from about 65 uh, 65 to about well 105 right if mathematically but I know that that's not possible so again averages are not perfect but I would expect a, a fairly large variation in scores there for the class that got a 75 plus or minus the standard deviation of 5 now one multiple of that that class roughly scored on average uh, between about we'd say 70 and 80 okay so now it becomes arguable because even though class one outperformed class two on average class one also had a lot more variation so from an instructional standpoint uh, you'd rather see this where, where most people are in the you know 70 to 80 range than to have a lot of people down here in the six you know in the 60s so uh, maybe you can still argue that class one is better um, because they had uh, more of the higher scores but class two was kind of more uh, was was less spread out and most people kind of perform within the same range within the same interval so which class is better uh, well another way to look at this is that almost all the times two standard deviations of the mean is really where we want to be looking so we want to be looking from a uh, mu plus or minus two sigmas two standard deviation and so that would mean that for class one class one would fall but from 85 plus or minus two times 20 and again it's not these values won't always make sense so the interval that this produces is actually 85 minus 40 which is 45 all the way up to 85 plus 40 which is 125 okay now practically speaking this should probably be a hundred since we know that that's probably the max but the according to the standard deviation we should have scores appearing between 45 and 125 so almost all scores should fall between there now you might have an outlier uh, here and there where uh, not you know that falls outside of this range but typically within two standard deviations is pretty common across the board okay well for class two this is 75 plus or minus two times five which uh, gives us a much tighter fit between 65 all the way up to 85 since that's 75 plus 10 so 65 to 85 I think is a little bit um, more reasonable than 45 to, to 100 because it would imply that we probably have some people that are failing now does it mean that there is a score in the data set where a person scored 45 no not not necessarily because this is the just the average amount maybe somebody got a zero didn't take it so that brought these uh, that really will affect the standard deviation a standard deviation is highly affected by outliers because the, so is the average the average takes that data point into account and so it skews things quite a bit We'll talk more about that in the um, in, uh, when we deal with normal distributions. Okay, well, let's say a student scores a ninety uh, a ninety on the test. How many standard deviations from the mean is this student if she is in class one? Okay, well, wait a minute. So first of all, it probably makes sense to say, "Oops, that was a bad line." Let me try that again. All right, let's try that one more time okay so it probably makes sense to describe this student in terms of how far away from the average is this student 
Well, the average in class one is 85, and we'll just say 90 is roughly this point over here. And so, well, we know that the deviation for this student, first of all, we want to know how much that student deviates, and that student deviates by plus 5, right? That's the x minus x bar. Uh, sorry, not, not x minus x bar, x minus mu, because we're dealing with a population. So x minus mu is the student's standard, uh, is the student's deviation. Well, how many standard deviations is that? Well, one standard deviation is equal to 20 points, and this person is basically five units away from the mean. Okay, well, 20 whole units away from the mean would be one standard deviation. So this student actually has a deviation of five uh, deviation units, and there are 20 deviation units per standard deviation. So that means this person is 0.25 standard deviations or a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so again, five, uh, five deviations, deviation units, and then there are 20 deviation units per standard deviation. And that means that the student uh, wasn't a full standard deviation above or below the mean. They were a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean. So not bad. It's good to be positive number of standard deviations with respect to the mean because that means you're scoring higher uh, than the average. Well, let's think about what we did here. So we took the difference between the, the student's score and, and uh, the mean, and then we divided it by how many standard uh, by the size of a standard deviation, which is uh, the size of sigma. Well, this is what we call a z-score, and in simple terms, we've already really defined it before we before we formalized it, but a z-score just tells us how many standard deviations, the number of standard deviations above or below the, the mean a score is. Okay, so in a similar fashion, if this student had uh, been in class 2 with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 5, we could, in a very similar way, uh, deal with that as well. With mu equals 75 and sigma equals 5, we could say, okay, well, wait a minute. This person scored a, uh, we said, a, a 90. So there's a 90. That's the, uh, the score the student got. So with respect to, if we're comparing the student, the student's score with respect to class 2, well, this person's score is actually 15 deviation units above the mean. Well, each deviation is 5 units. So 75 to 80 would be one standard deviation. 80 to 85 would be one, another standard deviation. And then 85 to 90 would be a third standard deviation. So this student is three standard deviations above the mean of class 2. In other words, if I wanted to calculate this thing we call a z-score, the first thing I'm looking at doing is figuring out the deviation, then in figuring out how many times the standard deviation goes into that difference. So x minus mu in this case would be 90 minus 75 divided by sigma, which is 5. Okay, well, 90 minus 75 is 15 deviation units divided by 5 deviation units per standard deviation, which gives me 3 standard deviations above the mean, since it's positive. So that's a way we could also talk about things in terms of not only the variability, but where do you rest with respect to all this variability? Are you, are you above the, the, the mean or below the mean? And how many standard deviations is that? Because 500 points may be a lot to be above the mean, but if one standard deviation is 1,000 points, then you're really not that far above the mean. Um, so that's where we'll, that's where we'll uh, stop with this one. Uh, the idea here is kind of to develop this idea of a z-score. And oh, uh, one other thing to note is that what we can also do, or one, one other way we could visualize this, this property is we've already, we did this in the past slide, that if we know that z is equal to x minus mu over sigma, or for a, a, a sample, z is x minus the sample mean divided by the sample standard deviation, if I know what the mean and uh, standard deviation are, and you tell me how many standard deviations a score is from the mean, I can figure out what x is. 
given any three of these pieces of information in this equation, I can figure out the fourth piece by using a little bit of algebra.